around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. People today think young, make more time for fun at home, family style. This is the life for Pepsi-Cola, light, bracing, clean-tasting Pepsi. So think young. Say, Pepsi, please. So go ahead and fix your drink. But let you drink, young as you think. Yes, get the right one, the modern light one. Now it's Pepsi for those who think young. Wild horses right away from them. Didn't we read? They're probably still looking for them. <laughs> but we got two, Ma. Two wild horses in the corral. I seen you drive them in. Yeah, they'll bring good money. That's right, Ma. They're sound. Any trouble? No, we just rode away from them. Rode away from who? Old man Sloat and his second boy. That jazz. You you take him away from the Sloat? No, we just that rode him. Now, Reed, you tell me straight. That's right, Ma. They was out on open range. We got them rounded up first. Yeah, and we got away first, too. I don't want no trouble. Oh, we can handle it, Ma. And we can always handle them slow. I don't want nothing to handle. Now, Ma, there ain't no cause to worry. That's what your pa said. And he lays dead. Oh, pa was alone that day, Ma. Hey. Somebody's coming. It's them. Yep. Jass and his old man. Well, leave him come. They'll take the course we brought in. Come on, Jakey. Read. Jakey. In the corral, Jass. Get him. Sure, boss. Set your horses. We're taking the coats. Go on, Jass. You better hold on. We roped them. They're our coats. Ain't they, Reed? They're ours right enough. There ain't never no call for you slopes riding onto our place. And there sure ain't no call for you trying to take them coats. I'm ordering you off our land right now. He's talking big like his pa did. Go on, Jazz, go gather up them coats. Sure, Pa, I'll get him. Not likely you won't. <laughs> Jakey! Pa, oh, there wasn't no call to shoot him. Mister, that was my brother you shot. You hold it, boy. Right where you are. You don't want the same. You murder and all! <laughs> he drawed too late, just like his pa. Well, go on, Jazz. Get the coats. Mm -hmm. You just gonna leave them alive, Paul? If they need burying, their maw can do it. Will you get them coats? All right, Paul. Get off my land. Paul, she's got a gun. Never mind her. Just go on. Paul! Uh -huh. You kill him. You kill my boy. You get off this land before I kill you, too. Now get! You. Yeah. 
Silky? No, Ma. You sure drove off, Ma. Oh, no credit to that. You're right, Jakey. Can you stand? Yeah. Sure so, Ma. Yeah. Just got my head creased, I guess. Well, let's, let's look to your brother. He's living, Jakey. But he's bad hurt. We gotta get him in. You fit to carry? Yeah, sure, Ma. I'll take his head. No, I can lift him. I'll take his head. All right. As soon as we, as we get him down, you ride right off to Dodge. Sure, Ma. Yeah, I'll bring the doc right back. The doc and the marshal. The marshal. We never needed the law, Ma. We can handle them slopes. Pa said there never was a Your pa, your pa ain't saying no more. You bring the marshal straight. Tomorrow, as some of you know, is Monday. And Monday, as all too many of you know, can mean the beginning of another dreary workaday week. It can mean that, but it doesn't have to. Not if you're tuned to your favorite CBS radio network station to hear the great morning lineup of entertainment. This is what you'll hear. Arthur Godfrey time, presided over by the irrepressible redhead with big-name guest stars like Arlene Francis and Kay Ballard. And musical treats from singers Kong Ling and Richard Hayes the jazz harmonica player Jean Thielman and Dick Hyman's orchestra. The Gary Moore Radio Show, starring one Garrison Morford and his sidekick Derwood Kirby in lots of lively talk. Art Linkletter's house party with fun for all the guests, including you, and highlighting Art's inimitable children's interviews. And finally, the Bing Crosby Rosemary Clooney Show, presenting two great singers bringing song and friendly banter. All here, all available, Monday through Friday, at this dial address. And you can see for yourself, Miss Kitty, we got rid of three cases last week. Well, all right, Sam. I'll order it the next time the drummer comes through. Oh, oh, sorry, ma'am. I'm sure sorry, ma'am. I didn't mean it to run in. It wouldn't hurt you to look. Oh, never mind. It's all right. Yeah, well, I, I didn't see you, ma'am. Well, I hope you didn't. I'd hate to think you nearly knocked me down on purpose. Oh, no. No, ma'am. It's just that I was looking for somebody. Who are you looking for? Well, the lady that runs this place, ma'am. You found her. What? You mean it's you? Something the matter with that? Well, uh, no. No, ma'am. I just figured she'd be bigger and older like... like anybody that... That runs a saloon? Well, yes, ma'am. I'll take that as a compliment. What can I do for you? They told me up the street you always know where the marshal is. I'll take that as a compliment, too. Uh, you're looking at his office? Yes, ma'am. Yes, he ain't there. You know where I can find him or the doctor? Sound like you're in real trouble. My brother's shot bad. Ma said he'd come to Dodge and fetch him, but I ain't found neither one of them. Well, sometimes they come in here about this time, and sometimes they don't. Well, you're halfway in luck anyway. Matt? Matt? The marshal just walked in. That big fella? Yeah, that big fella. Hmm. Uh, hello, Kitty. Something up? Uh, this boy, what's your name? Jakey Sale. He's in trouble, Matt. Oh? This is Marshal Dillon, Jakey. How do you, Marshal? Oh, it's trouble, Jakey. My brother Reed. He's been shot. Ma said to get you. And the doc. I couldn't find him. Oh, where is your brother? Out to the home place. That's west of town, isn't it? Yes, sir. Out past Turkey Creek. Uh-huh. You know who shot him? Yeah. The old man Sloat. He'd done it. Why? Well, they come after our horses, and we tried to stop them. 
They shot your brother. Did they get the horses? No, no, sir. No, after Ma shot Jass, old man Sloat, he rode right off. Your mother shot Jass Sloat? Yeah, Marshal, she did. <laughs> Never seen her use a rifle before, neither. All right, I'll get right out there. Well, the Sloats won't let her go at that, will they, Matt? No, Kitty, they won't. Do what you can to help the boy find Doc, will you? Yeah, sure. Chester and I will start on out. The boy can show Doc the way. <laughs> Never called in the law before. Yeah, sounds like it. So long, Kitty. I'll see you later. Sir, Mr. Dillon, I ain't been this far west since I was calling on Miss Ruthie Face Workpager. Whatever happened to that romance, Chester? Well, I wouldn't exactly call it no romance, Mr. Dillon. Though she did let me kiss her one time when we was both out to the barn. Oh, well, I'm glad you were both there. Well, of course we was both there. How else in the world could I have kissed her? She married uh, Sam Bigelow, didn't she, Chester? Yes, she did. And I never could rightly understand it, neither. Oh, Sam's a nice enough fellow. But not he? as nice as you are. Is that it? Well, sir, Mr. Dillon, I don't think he's no nicer. I'll say that. Oh, Ruthie Faye must have thought so. Well, what does a woman know about men? Yeah. yeah. Ain't that the slow place just yonder there? Yes, it is. I didn't expect to find them here. There's two horses tied in front of the house. Yeah, you're right. Come on. Get over behind those trees. This doom seems like that shot came from back there. Yeah, watch the house, too. That's right. I'm the U.S. Marshal. I want to talk to you. Got nothing to say to the law. Well, I got something to say to you. It'll be easier if you put down your gun. See, Mr. Dillon, over by the side of the barn. Yeah. I'm coming out, Sloat. I can shoot if I have to. I wouldn't try it, Marshal. There's two of us. We got the drop. You better ride off like you come. Put the gun down. You keep an eye out, Chester. I'm going to try to get closer behind that rock up there. Yes, sir. <laughs> Get a milk. You got a good shot from up there. Up there, the barn roof, Mr. Dillon. You got him. He fell clean off. All right, Slug. You lost your rod. You better come out. I ain't coming out. Okay. Chester, work around to the other side, and then you'll have a clean shot at him. All right, sir. Oh, no, no, wait. Wait, I give up. Don't kill me. And throw your gun down. Here. Yeah. You're all right. Come on, Chester. You gonna hang me? We'll let the judge figure that. I got his gun, Mr. Dillon. All right, Chester, tie him up and watch him. I'm gonna go to sales. <laughs> I'd had them colts and been gone if milk didn't come late. He should have been a little later. Watch him good, Chester. I'll pick you up on the way back. Everybody likes good news. Since this is true... Wouldn't expanded CBS News broadcasts find greater favor with the vast CBS radio listening audience if they simply omitted bad news? There's a pretty obvious answer to that one, and it goes like this. Of course not. Expanded CBS News has only one object, to present all the important global news swiftly and without bias. This takes more than just good intentions. It takes thousands upon thousands of miles of complex communications links, 
hundreds of skilled newsmen. There's that matter of experience, too, the kind of experience only years can create. In a sense, expanded CBS News is a network within a network, a service acting around the clock to meet your need to know, to keep you informed of important events, no matter where they happen. For longer, stronger coverage of world happenings, it's expanded CBS News on CBS Radio. You can depend on it. Yes, ma'am. Matt Dillon. Well, where's Jakey? Well, he's waiting to bring the doctor out. They should be here before long. Uh, I need more firewood. Round the side there. My boy Reed's shivering cold. Uh, sure, ma'am. I'll get it for you. use a stick or two. Yes, ma'am. There you are. Uh, would you bring me the pan of water, Marshal? Sure, ma'am. His bad took, Marshal. Yeah, I see he is. I don't know what to do but keep him warm and keep his head cool. I've been at it all day. Uh, Doc Adams will fix him up. we got to keep him going till he gets here. We'll sure try, ma'am. We'll sure try. Up, Doc. Come on, come on, come on. Ma, Ma, I brought the Doc. Oh, I'm sure relieved to see you, Doctor. Oh, sorry I couldn't get here sooner, ma'am. Hello, Doc. Oh, hello, Matt. Uh, let's have a look here. I, I missed him all I could. Mm-hmm. Hold that light over here, will you, Matt? Yeah, sure. Bullet went in and came out. Well, that's good. Then you won't have to do no cutting. No, I won't have to do any cutting. Is he all right, Doc? I'm trying to find out. His fever's breaking. That's good, ain't it? Yes, that's good. His heart's strong. Well, it looks to me like the worst is over, Mr. Sale. I think you'll make it all right. Oh, thank the Lord. I'll sit around and watch him for the next few hours, just to be sure. Well, I'd be beholden, Doctor. Can the boy put my horse up? Jakey. Right off, Ma. I'll do it right off. And rub it down good, too. I, uh... I'm glad for the good news, Miss Sale. I guess I can be getting on back now. I called you here because of the shooting, Marshal. Oh, yeah, but that's all over, Miss Sale. I told you, the Sloats won't be bothering you anymore. Milton and Jass are dead, and I'm picking up old man Sloat on the way back to Dodge. I didn't call you here because of the Sloats. No? Well, uh, why did you? Because of me. Because of you? I want you to arrest me for the killing I did. Oh, uh. Miss Sale, I, I was just a shooting. Your two boys have been gunned down. I, I, I'm not going to hold you for that. I want the judge to say well, that. Well, there's no need for the judge. There man. is for me, Marshal. I killed a man. I killed Jack Sloat, and I want to answer for it. Miss Sale. We've been living without the law for a long time, Marshal. 
We've been doing our own fighting and saying what was right. My husband didn't see no need for the law. And he was shot? He was shot, feuding, without the law. Well, I don't want that no more, Marshal, for me or for my boys. I want them to lean to the law instead of to their guns. On a sale, that's the right way to think, but uh, this time there's no need for me to arrest you. The killing was justified. Well, then the judge would let me go, wouldn't he? Sure, he'd let you go. And the boys would see how the law works. Uh, all right, Marshal. You can arrest me now. But the sale... Go ahead, Matt. Arrest her. She's teaching a hard lesson, and it, it may take hold. You think so, Doc? I think so. All right, then. Miss Sale, you're going to have to come with me. I'm arresting you. Thank you, Marshal. No, ma'am. I think maybe I should thank you. When you need someone to do a specific type of job, you hire someone specially trained to do that job. After all, this is an age of specialization. What you may not know is that right now, there are several hundred thousand men and women who have received special training and are searching for employment. These people, many of whom are veterans, have physical handicaps, which actually often makes them better able to fill specific jobs. Sound strange? Maybe so. But here's the explanation. These men and women, recognizing their shortcomings, have sought and received special rehabilitation and training in specific areas of work. They are all highly skilled because they have been taught to make the best use of the physical and mental abilities they possess. Looking for help? Contact your state employment service and ask about physically handicapped workers. Employing the physically handicapped is good business. Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Virginia Christine, Richard Crenna, John Daner, Sam Edwards, and Vic Perrin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke. The laughs are on Arthur Godfrey every weekday on the CBS Radio Network.